everyone. Thank you for coming today. Um, thank you on behalf of Con Carolinas and Radio. Uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you could make it here on Sunday morning. Um, I am your moderator, and uh, here's my game plan. I want to um, first obviously have our guests introduce themselves, and then I have some questions. And I hope the answers for those from our panelists will help us then uh, kind of create a three-dimensional uh, review of the 11th Doctor thus far, sort of a, a report card, if you will. And then I want to open it up to the audience to uh, either answer the questions that I posed yourselves, or comment on our panelists' answers, or pose new questions of your own. First, I'd like to ask for uh, introductions, and there's several different bits of information I'd like to, to ask for from my panelists. Um, first, obviously, who you are, why you're here. Um, also, if you could characterize in a sentence or so your uh, long-term relationship with the program. Dr. Who. Uh, I'd like to know who your first doctor was, and I'd like to know who your favorite doctor is, so that we can put your comments in context. While you're thinking about that, I'll kick things off. I'm Amy H. Sturgis. Um, I have a PhD from Vanderbilt University in Intellectual History, and I uh, specialize in science fiction and fantasy studies, and Native American studies. Um, uh, various uh, articles, essays, and books I've written, and, and uh, books I've also edited. Uh, I also am representing uh, here on Starship Sofa, for which I'm uh, a crew member for the last several years. Um, I contribute the uh, history, looking back on genre history segment, uh, as well as um, dramatic readings, and uh, thanks to the support of our listeners and the science fiction community. Uh, last year we became the first podcast to win the Hugo Award, and we are uh, a finalist again this year, and we're very, very grateful. Um, I'd say in the long term, my relationship, I've been a, uh, a casual fan all of my life, and uh, since the 21st century reboot, I've been a serious fan. My first doctor was Tom Baker. My favorite doctor uh, of the classics uh, would be either uh, Copley or McCoy. And uh, my favorite contemporary or reboot doctor is Boston. Oh, my next. Okay, um, I'm. You got this, and it's cool. Yes, I got this. <laughs> this is so cool. And bunk beds are cool, and senses are cool. But um, I'm David Bosham. I. Um, Oh, yeah. I do everything when it comes to the, to, to the written word. Uh, anthologist, uh, writer, editor, um, podcaster with both with, with uh, Amazing Book Adventures and Galaxy Quiet Radio, which is the video podcast about Doctor Who. Um, I think I'm one of the lucky few. Um, I literally grew up with Doctor with Doctor Who. I can't tell you who my first Doctor is. I mean, Doctor Who has been part of my life since since I can remember, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, so I can't tell you actually who my first doctor is, but my favorite doctor of classic Who would have to be Peter Davison, and then um, out of New Who, I would actually have to say it has to be Mr. Smith. Matt Smith has has totally won me over, and I think part of that's because of Moffat. And I think I'll be playing our winner song for the panel. <laughs> okay, David, you still have my answers that I was going to say, but <laughs> yeah, I'm um, good at that. Uh, my name is Jason Buterin, uh, creative director of a little indie bohemian film company called Bad Ones Films. Um, writer, director, uh, editor, graphic designer, uh, I mean, yeah, kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, wearing cowboy hat, cowboy hats are cool. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Until they get shut off the kid. First doctor, uh, well, my one simple relationship with doctor. Um, I grew up in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and like, every Saturday night on PBS at 9 o'clock, Doctor Who would come on. It's like I would always like stay up late just to go to watch it, because as soon as I would hear the theme song, I would run from my bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I have a song. Um, so I mean, I mean, I just, you know, I grew up watching that, and I just, uh, it's bigger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, I mean, kind of like David, I mean, it's just, it's always been a part of my life. Um, as far as my favorite doctor, you know, classical doctors, um, I, I have to go Tom Baker. I mean, I just, I, it, that's what I remember the most about those early episodes, um, especially in the early 80s. Uh, favorite new doctor, it was Tennant up until the last few episodes, and it's kind of switched to Smith. Um, I was filled with a lot of trepidation when they made the announcement about him. I um, was very worried, just had no idea what was going to happen, and I think after the third episode, or the second episode he was in, I was hooked, sold. My name is... 
Do you love them? No, that's not my bad. <laughs> Where'd you wake up this morning? <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, my name is Andy Fairbanks. Uh, I'm a podcast editor, uh, host of the 501st Cast, which is a podcast for the 501st. Um, and I do clean on karaoke here with my wife. And I'm an overall Doctor Who geek. Have been since first off back in '81. I want to say maybe it was a little bit earlier. I'm not sure. It, it, there was some station in High Point showing it like at five o'clock in the morning, and my first doctor was Tom Baker, and that's my favorite. And of the new series is, I would say, best. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you all so much. Um, this new, new Doctor Who um, is uh, a new and different in several ways. Um, youngest, uh, first to be nominated for a BAFTA for Best Actor, yeah. uh, and has a unique backstory um, with his companion. Uh, so we not only have the, um, <laughs> the new guy, but you have uh, the new mythos of the Raggedy Doctor and the girl who waited. Um, recently on uh, Slice of Sci-Fi, uh, they discussed that, that uh, you've got the reboot with number nine, and you've got the reboot of the reboot with number 11. How do you think uh, the way Matt Smith looks, and the way he has been introduced in this new uh, reboot of the reboot, if you will, uh, changes the Doctor Who game? Isn't Doctor Who about change? I'm yes. not just, I, mean, yes. you know, I mean, I mean, just going back to the very beginning. I mean, they weren't sure if they were going to be canceling the show or not when Hartnell left. I mean, this was a radical idea. I mean, it was new with every generation at first, and you know, and then the same thing happened with uh, Hartnell. I mean, what kind of Hartnell? Um, yeah, Charlton. They weren't sure if they're going to continue it. That's why they got rid of everybody at once, and you know, and but you know, it's it's all about change. It always has been. Um, I think one of the, the interesting things I've read about before was that the original look of Matt Smith was supposed to be much more like swashbuckler and piratey and like Captain Jack Sparrow and stuff like that. And um, Matt just Smith, a scarf too. Yeah, well, Matt Smith when uh, when he first uh, first I guess accepted the role, he's like, he's like, this isn't this is how somebody else would dress the Doctor. This isn't how the Doctor would dress himself. And I think you, I can't remember the episode he watched, but it was one of the trial ones. Um, and he just sort of like took the bow tie and the jacket, yeah. sort of sort of you know. Paid a sartorial homage to, to Trout with that, which I think is fantastic. I mean, yeah. Yeah, right? I mean the, the very intrinsic beauty of this show is its adaptability and flexibility to change. I mean, there, there there are no there are no you know light motifs that are not acceptable. I mean, you can do anything you want. Yeah. to. The, the beauty of regeneration, you know. Um, I'm trying to figure out what the heck happened with that girl that regenerated. Uh, what was it? You know, <laughs> the little girl. The little girl. The little girl. Yeah. Great yeah. mystery. Who is she? Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you? Oh, see, I didn't. He watched a new episode. Last I've seen it. Oh. That's right. Oh. 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 Like I said. Like, la 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 la. la, 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 la. Yeah, yeah, I have a song with the panel. <laughs> I have my room. Oh. Home. <laughs> That's the answers. <laughs> <laughs> But at least I know I'm not the only one in this room that knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <you're both> shot. <laughs> Do you believe the success of the new Doctor, though, as compared to the old series, is really on the writers? I think it's on Stephen Moffat. Yeah. That Damn straight! <laughs> I, would, I love my wife, I would make out with Stephen Moffat. <laughs> The next level. I would have sex with Stephen Moffat. Well, I'll have sex. I'll make out with him. We can videotape it. Damn um, straight. <laughs> but I mean, I, I love Stephen Moffat. Uh, I used to watch Coupling uh, back on BBC America a long, long time ago. I mean, and that show was just bloody brilliant. I mean, the, the way the gift that man has with words, which obviously I don't intend in the morning. Um, I mean, it was just brilliant. As soon as I found out he was going to take over as showrunner, I mean, well, my, both my hearts just went. <gasps> <laughs> you know, it's Moffat's fault we have who back. Really? Yeah. Yes. Um. Curse of Death. 
He is the one that wrote it. And I did not know that until about a year ago when I was watching finally behind the scenes. Cool. That's what started it off because they, they realized the ratings were the highest they'd ever had for a comedy special for charity. And they're like, wow, we have something here. And then they grew from there with the web, web stuff and then Davey's taking over. But I mean, it, it's all thanks to Moffat. I have no doubt. Yeah. The point about writing is something I want to get back to. That's definitely a good one. Well, sure you had a chance to answer What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. idea of, of um, if this is the reboot of the reboot and how certain things uh, are, are changed with the game that, that Matt's that has brought in terms of um, not only his look and not only the credit he's received for acting, but also the way that um, this new doctor has a new mythos with his companion. Uh, that, is different in a sense than than, uh, than past stories. Even the you know if you look at the the, the show's beginning, uh, uh, it's narrated by you know the girl who waited about the raggedy doctor. Yeah, and um, what is up with that? Why is why is the BB, why is BBC America putting that whole thing in before the main titles? When I was a child, I used to have this friend. It's the first time they've ever done that. There were, there were a lot of people that were pissed off about it. I'm yeah. so glad. I have a version of the show. Uh -huh. <laughs> And but as far as change goes, mm -hmm. I mean, for that program to have its longevity, it has to change. It has to keep evolving and evolving. I mean, without it, it, it would just stay the same and it wouldn't be as popular. But for as for Matt Smith, when he was announced to be the doctor, they had an interview with him. Right, it's like right after they announced, <coughs> they attempted there was an interview with him. And I hadn't seen him before. He was in Ruby and the Spoke with Billy Piper. Right. And um, as soon as I showed the interview and the way he was talking during the interview, it's like, that's why they chose him. Yeah, I saw why they chose him when he was doing his interview. Well, I mean, he was the second person that auditioned for the part, or it may, may not second, but he was like first day of uh, auditions. And they were like, they looked at each other, they're like, this is who we want, but we still have all these other people in the audition. I mean, they got really nervous about that. Which yes. like, yeah. Here it is, only the first hour. <laughs> it was like, close. Yeah. <laughs> and we got like, how many days? Exactly. <laughs> but sort of like how they got 10, you know, he went in saying, what am I going to wear? <laughs> so I, I think they just know when they find that right actor, and I'll say I was a little nervous about Matt Smith, not when I saw what he looked like, but when that one piece of audio leaked about oh. from Victory of the Dialects, I, uh, because I know it was really just, it sounded so strange, but you know, I had faith, because it was Stephen Moffat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stephen Moffat. See, but the color like, real dollars kind of go. Well, no, that kind of bothered me. Blue dollar, red dollar, yellow dollar, green dollar. To me, that, that was a throwback to the movies. True, but yeah, like Dr. Susan Whale. <laughs> <laughs> the Dr. Susan. These are the super Daleks. They're a little bit taller and they're a different color. And what the heck is the world? And you can no longer hide behind a couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about the secondary characters that we have here? Specifically, we have uh, the companion's husband, I heart Rory, heart and Lord. we have oh, uh, yes. uh, yeah. the song. Especially in the Dream Lord when he had this little ponytail. <laughs> 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 yes. It was so good. I mean, I just. Well, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just, he's not in that, like, he's just so endearing and charming. And just like what he's, I mean, look at the change in his character. <laughs> From the beginning, when we first saw him, to now, yeah. to what you guys are going to see next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I'm just saying, I mean, he has had some phenomenal growth as a character. He has not been a cardboard cutout companion in any sense. I mean, he's really grown, because I know it's like, at the beginning of the season, it's just like, you know, he just kept changing. I mean, he was like, he, I mean, he was heartbroken. Um, I mean, he had Amy save his life, and he got heartbroken about Idris, and you know, he just kept building. And then, like, then he died. Yeah, yeah. 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 again. Yeah. 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 I can't say anything. <laughs> I can't oh, say no, 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 no. <laughs> See, I'm just building the anticipation for you guys. So I just have to live up to the anticipation I'm building for you. Will you just answer me one very vain, nebulous kind of question? Oh, well. Do we finally find out the nature of the relationship with River and the Doctor? I will say this. <laughs> Not only do you find out the nature of the relationship, you do find out who she is. Excellent. And cool. 
Yeah. You know what's so cool about her, though? It's just like a recent episode, you know, where the doctor dies and everything. She's walking around with a big whopping sidearm on her hips, walking around in public, in a restaurant, and nobody pays any attention to her because it looks like she should have that weapon on her. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? So, so it's like a is. Is it, if, if, And she's got that bearing, yeah. you know, like you would never question. Well, her. if you like, if, if you like, the thing about it is, if you walk into the place like you own it, yes. nobody's yeah, ever going to question you. Yeah, that's, that's exactly yeah. right. I, honestly, I, I've done that on many occasions. I walked into something I should not have been at, I just walked in like I belonged there, and they just let me under. <laughs> I always think I'm with the band, so I mean, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, we are all massive fans of Bob, and I would point out that, that he is one of the masters of saying something new by knowing things old, and, and I, because I'm also a massive fan of what he and Mark Adams have done with Sherlock. Oh, and, my uh, gosh. So, yeah. He's uh, he's the master of the canon and and uh, yes. repackaging not repackaging reinterpreting the canon yeah. to make it relevant again. Well, he, he breathes um, new life into old monsters. That's yeah, exactly. I, mean, I, just, I mean that's that's, that's what I love. I like. And I thought I got mean, I'm probably jumping ahead a little bit, but like I thought the Weeping Angels. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, we're the <laughs> best damn monsters ever. And then I saw the silence. Yes. Weeping Angels versus silence. I mean, but <laughs> yeah, you know, and, you know, even the you know bringing the, the you know with the the victory of the Daleks and stuff like that, like like taking these these classical archetypal Doctor Who nemeses and putting just a slightly different spin on it. So it's like it, he's not just he's not reinventing the same stories that we've had before. He's not completely altering the mythology of the Daleks. And you're like they're different people, but he's like he's just. <laughs> And also the great thing about Moffat, it's not he's not seen it as a singular season. I mean he's like, actually there's stuff he started really, two or three years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couple years ago it is not just I mean, really hello over song. <laughs> I mean yeah. and like his entire run with Matt Smith. I mean, he didn't answer all the questions. And he's still not answering all the questions. <laughs> he gives us some answers, he asks more. And I still want that episode on the Orient Express with the Egyptian goddess. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. One of the things we talked about at the Sherlock panel yesterday was um, how the way he uses canon is sending people back to the original text. My question for you is, is the way he's using who canon sending new fans back to the old? I can actually answer that because of, because of, the, because of the podcast. Um, two of my co-hosts, and this is why I chose them, have not seen much Classic Who. One, when we started the show, and we're only like seven episodes in now, had only seen literally five episodes of New Who. That's all he had seen. Then the other the other girl on it had, had seen a handful more, but part part of the deal was you know like we would watch some new boo, but then I would also show them because the way the stories were broken down into the half an hour segments, I tease them with like a half an hour or two parts, and they're like we want more because I started them the first thing I showed them classic coup wise was uh, Battlefield. And they're like, oh, yeah. we want more, we want to see what happens, but I'm not going to give it to them until after they now watch The Five Doctors next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sweet. so I, I, I'm a hook, you know, and I, I think it is. I think people are going back because, and if you, even if they see a little, it, what's their appetite? Because Moffat has been so good about showing the other doctors where Davies wasn't. Because I'll admit, in the first half, what Moffat did. I mean, I don't, when, when yeah. he's like, like, he's flashing through, he's like, he's like, ah, oh, he's a doctor. And he comes through at the very end. Yeah, the and I'm just like, like chill. that is oh. what sold me as Matt Smith, this doctor. I mean, he, just when they start playing the doctor's thing, which I, said, I think is so cool that the doctor has his own like heroic music now. <laughs> and he's like, enough of this raggedy doctor. And, you know, he's. Changing and he goes to that entire spiel, but when he walked through that, that hologram and said, I was like, I'm the doctor, now I'm one, that was it. I was done. Because I think some of the old, other doctors never really sold me on that first episode of the new stuff, but Smith just, thanks to Moffat, I think, just nailed it. Thoughts before we move on? Well, as far as uh, uh, Roy and Amy, it's like, I just saw. Beast Below again, and it's so weird not to have four here. <laughs> <laughs> you miss, you miss yeah, him. it was he's, like, he's part of the puzzle. Where's Rory? <laughs> <laughs> Extra Bond. Yeah, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to talk about it, uh, um, your, your picks for, for episodes thus far, but before we do that, I think one has to be talked about separately, and that is Neil Gaiman's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 But it's pretty too. <laughs> I love sexy. Yeah. I would love. Did you do this? No. Did you make a wish? No. Yeah. <laughs> Did you oh. oh. There would always seem to be a little bit of insinuation, even in the past, that the TARDIS was a living creature. But oh. it was uh, up until uh, uh, no. David Tennant's uh, no. session no. that it really brought out that it was an actual living. No, and well, actually, it actually goes back to Hartnell, the yeah. very first yeah. episode of Doctor Who. Yeah, they make it a little bit, but it was never came out directly. Well, I actually, um, I got this really cool thing called the TARDIS Handbook. It, it's been hinted at for a long yeah, time yeah. In, through Class of Who um, that the TARDIS was uh, uh, some some sort of. It was more than just a TARDIS. It just wasn't like the Master's TARDIS or the Ronnie's TARDIS or all the other ones. That Type 40 TARDIS was something special. It evolved it. It's like R2-D2. <laughs> You're supposed to wipe astromechs every once in a while or they develop a personality. <laughs> well, I just bore one thing about that. Everybody was like, what I love is the fact that or the one line um, when the TARDIS basically told the doctor, he's like, well, I stole you. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is really... Sort of disturbing. Disturbing, but it is such a good one. So it was, it's like it's sort of like, well, maybe it wasn't the doctor's choice. That maybe he just happened to be walking by, and it was like. If she, <laughs> if she said she took him where he needed to go. Yeah, I know that yeah. one line where he's yelling, at, where they're having you know that heated, yeah, you know, like a mirror me. You yeah. never take me where I where I wanted to go, no, but I took you where you needed to go. Yeah. I was just like. Okay. <laughs> well, on on his point, she unlocked the door for him. So I think they both chose. Yeah, I, I think it, it it was a you know they didn't realize what they're getting themselves into, but they were really glad they did. I wouldn't something the doctor open the door like this now. He doesn't do that enough. It's clean. <laughs> <laughs> that was a discovery. Uh, I forget the name of the episode, but that was a line Yeah, 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 yeah. One of those. Classic game and reversals, like like uh, uh, she chose him. Um, the notion that the doctor saw uh, all of the discarded pieces of old Tardises and saw a junkyard, and she saw the graveyard with the bones of her sister. Yeah, yeah. that's one of those moments that you're never going to look at, the, at things that are the same again. And and Damon's uh, uh, written about the fact that that he's been overwhelmed by the reaction of the episode, and since he's overwhelmed by reaction to everything he does. <laughs> Say, you know, yeah. that, that takes a turn at a little well, success of that. Another thing about taking the soul out of the TARDIS, I think it has been done before in Parting of the Ways. Yeah. When mm -hmm. Rose took yeah. the whole. Yeah. And, and, her, and when she said, I had to save you, my doctor. Was that, yeah. was that really Rose or was that the TARDIS talking? Mm. It was totally the TARDIS. <laughs> we'll retro con it to the TARDIS. <laughs> but there are some things that was left out of the Doctor's wife. Yeah, I know there are at least two scenes that were left out. I mean, it's like at the beginning of the episode where, the, where he gets the cube, it was supposed to have been like a scene where they were in, a, in the middle of another adventure. And it's like they were about to be executed. And then right before they're supposed to be executed, the cube comes in and hits the doctor. <laughs> and he picks it up, and he just leaves. <laughs> it's like, it's like no matter, it's like, it didn't matter that they, whoever was in peril was still in peril. They all just left, right, in the middle of a story. And another scene was where, when they're going through the TARDIS, we were supposed to see more console rooms. Well, when they said that we're going to see, you know, when they said I'm sending you to another console room, I was, I mean, I was. Which one were you? Well, the, the thing is, is, I was wondering if we were going. I I had real doubts that we were going to see, you know, the, the standard tan room. But what I was really hoping for was Baker's yeah. wooden so was chair I. one. Oh, that, that was awesome. One. That was the one I was thinking they might go to, but um, I, I I knew they had not scrapped fully the the tenant set, so I figured it had to be that one. And then once we saw the trailer. Uh, for the new season, and we saw tenants. I, it, it was definitely tenants. I think what's really what was really odd is like last year in the, like the early episodes, 
when they were doing behind the scenes interview, they would be doing the interview in front of the old David Tennant <laughs> console room. It's like, why is that still around? A lot of <laughs> it's archive. Yeah, I mean, most people on set All had no room. idea why they had saved it. There was only like a handful of people that knew because originally this was supposed to happen last season, but the, they knew the episode was going to cost too much, so they had to move the season. And you could tell just by, I mean, and like one of the monsters, they, the reason why they had the Ood in there is because they couldn't afford another monster. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, why don't we do the Ood instead? Yeah, you get around. Yeah, another, yeah. another Ood, you felt the same. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so this is a loves the series and we're all overflowing with, with uh, uh, adoration here. I do want to ask before I get to the high points of uh, uh, the high point episodes, um, is there an episode you felt was the weakest? Is there anything uh, thus far with Eleven that, um, that you would say has disappointed you or worried you? If you had to pick the weakest episode thus far of Eleven, what would oh, it be? For me it's probably either the Beast Below or the two-part Solarian one. Those those who didn't grab, but I mean, let me just say, the, this these seasons at its worst are some shows at their very best. Mm -hmm. I mean, some shows never get there. Exactly. <laughs> uh, definitely. Yeah. It, do you want to talk any more about why no, those? No, I just they just I, I don't know. They, they just didn't hit me well. Now there are parts in what I love, but as as an episode of whole, they just. They didn't move me like some of the other episodes. I mean, they, they, they weren't a blink. They weren't a good man goes to war. They weren't, you know, the almost people. I mean, they're just, it just didn't like, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, that's a good one. Um, I thought it was baseball though, too, I guess. I mean, it was just, it was. It was good, but it, um, and then you know, the biker board. Um, <laughs> we didn't know about it yet, though. But yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, well, we knew she was gonna get married, but no, we knew we weren't was in the first episode. And I think it's one of the, the, the things is that, that that first episode oh, yeah. was so amazing. Uh, it's one of those things. How do you take it? How do you follow along to something like that? Um, probably the Curse of the Black Spot. Oh, yeah. that was such a fun episode! Yeah. Pirates! Pirates! Pirate. 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 Come on! Uh, there's something that just bothered me about that episode. I don't know why. Maybe I need to watch it again. Oh, that? It is a wreck. You need to watch it again, let me just yeah. say that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> oh. Spoilers! I am not spoiling anything, I'm just saying you need to watch the episode again. Yeah, I want to see it once though. That's the one episode I haven't seen. Yeah. Was it? Was it Lily Cole? Lily Cole oh, played yeah. the siren. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And she had a lot of fun doing that role. I, I guess I, the one thing I've enjoyed about Nihu in general is the confidentials afterwards. And yeah, and they've just been a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, that's like. And actually, what I've noticed with the past two, like ever since they had Moffat take over, they meant they reference Old Who more and more. Which of course I think I know what that's the answer, which is the 50th anniversary. They want to make sure people have enough back knowledge mm -hmm. when they blow all the fans' minds away. <laughs> well, well, one thing they got some friends of mine interested in the old who's was the uh, Sarah Jane episode with David Trent. I said, "Well, oh. who is she?" And I said, "She was a former uh, companion who got left behind, and you saw her reaction as you know why." I thought you were dead, you never came back. So, because we always wonder what happens afterwards. That was a good illustration. But they went back, and I introduced them to. Uh, well, the first one I saw was uh, the the intro, introducing her with uh, Peter. No, uh, you know the silver hair John suit. John Pertwee. John Pertwee. Time where? Yeah, uh, character where she was introduced there as a reporter, okay. and then they got into the series following it there forward. But it was basically because of the introduction of a former yeah. uh, companion in the new series. Sarah Jane, Elizabeth Slayton, and sad face. Hundred <laughs> silence. The silence effect. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my markers. <laughs> So, what would you say if you had to um, 
you had to name your favorite, um, not the one you would necessarily recommend the new viewer, and none of us are new viewers, so we don't have to worry about that other thing. Um, but uh, the best, the best moment thus far for a lot of them. Uh, the doctor's wife. Yeah. I mean, hands down. I mean, that's just. Oh, uh, that's. I mean, classic who's just th so thrown in that episode. I can actually pick out the various doctors that were referencing throughout the entire episode. Yeah. Doctor's wife. Yeah. Yeah. That was all. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, so um, uh, that yeah. Uh, I think of uh, a good man goes to war because it is. The, the most different episode I've ever seen out of out of all of New Who. With with filming and pacing and stuff like that, it's it's not anything we've ever seen before. So I can't wait to hear what people say about this episode because it is so different. Which leads me to my yeah. next, and you have those of you who've seen this already have a better uh, better handle on this than than uh, the rest of us. What what do you foresee as um, not necessarily plot points, yeah. but, but the legacy? Where do you see Eleven going before we start talking about Twelve? Um, Eleven's going to make it until the anniversary. I think that is one we're, we're going to lose a lot of. That's, I think that's when we're going to lose Smith. Unless, of course, he gets a big time Hollywood deal or something before that. Because, um, I mean, he's, he's, he's made a point to say that he's not leaving the show, totally, the show anytime soon. And I think he's, he sort of has hinted at that is going to be when, if, when he does depart, it's going to be there. So, I mean, we're, we're going to have a fun ride with, with him for the anniversary. To run about it. Damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> what is the 50th anniversary? Uh, 20th, 13th. 13th. Yeah. November. Yeah. So, yeah, two more years. Part of the world's still around after December 21st. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or uh, what is it, October 21st? October, October yeah. yeah. The re rapture? Yeah, the re rapture. <laughs> <laughs> re -rapture. I blame the doctor for saving us. <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> hey, it's just as possible. What, the last question for me, and then I want to be sure uh, that we have time for the audience. Um, what do you want to see between now and then from not just Smith, but from all of our, our major characters, from the show itself, <laughs> as in more canon, or uh, as in... Uh, damn good storytelling. I don't care what it is, it's damn good storytelling, and they have not really let me down yet. Well, not having seen the oh so precious oh, <laughs> 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 um, there's some answers I would like a little bit of closure and stuff like that. Um, I really love the addition of uh, Mark Shepard's character. Like, I mean, like, oh, like, that's and, it. And having his father yeah. play the older version, yes. his actual father play the older version of him, which is brilliant. Well, and actually, it was supposed to have been Mark Shepard done up as old age makeup. Yeah. And then he said, "Well, why would you want to do that?" Just get my we, we didn't get my dad. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty awesome. <laughs> we're talking about that. I mean, I was just want to. I just want to. One of my sort of geek favorite sci-fi moments. I mean, you know, love to love Firefly. You know, yeah. Love to love Battlestar Galactica. So yeah. like, you just keep chowing up into my favorite sci-fi shows. I'm like, yeah. Um, as far as what else I want, I mean, yeah, I think I don't think Moffat's ever going to disappoint me. So I mean, I'm just going to let him do his Gallifreyan thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as far as the future, I mean, just still, yeah, what, oh. I mean, it's hard to, oh gosh, it's hard to say anything, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, that's great storytelling, and more surprises. I wouldn't mind uh, seeing Galen back for another episode. Yeah. Well, uh, now, here's a question. Well, it took him so long to write that one. Like, it, like I said, I, I don't want to... For, for, for Dr. You know, number 11, well, no, 14, 14. Anniversary. Right now. I want the I want him to write something for the anniversary because I have a feeling that this is just me speculating that they're going to try to get everybody back. I mean, everybody from companions to doctors, and just to be able to let game in play with whoever and whatever he wants would be just. Well, actually, <laughs> actually there's some news about. I don't know how accurate IMDb is. Oh, not at all. No, <laughs> no, I, I, not but, really. but I know what you're talking about. But, but the sad thing really. is, is after seeing what I saw last night, I believe it at least this much now. 
Should we tell them what it is? No. Nah. Hey, come on, let me. I keep yelling spoilers at me. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not really a spoiler, but it's a rumor. It's a rumor. According to IMDb, it's you, a sexy rumor. If you go, <laughs> if you go to episode thirteen of this season, the cast list, yes. it lists David Tennant as the Doctor and Peter Davison as yeah. the Doctor. Mm -hmm. I thought it was kind of weird that David Tennant was like was engaged or dating or married to Peter Davison. No, he, yeah, yeah, they married. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they, and they just had a baby. Yeah, yeah. they just had a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now we have a little girl in his hands. Exactly. Um, I said that was my last question. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I just wanted to ask about um, secondary media for Eleven, um, particularly because uh, an author that I've followed since she's been writing uh, her own work and, and Deep Space Nine work um, is Uma McCormick, and she's already done two novels now for Eleven for uh, for Matt Smith's character. I just wondered if you had any thoughts about um, the the secondary media in support of the, the novels and such in support of Eleven. Well, working at a library, and I like corrupting the kids at my at my library. Um, I would sound really bad. <laughs> no, no. The um, thing is, is, I made sure we brought in the new who novelizations from Tennant to Smith now, and they're checking out like crazy. So I mean, yeah, I mean, and and every once in a while, when they when they bug me bad enough, I actually show episodes that I'm not supposed to show because we're not actually licensed to show PBC stuff in the library. But you know, hey, if I can get these kids hooked on Doctor Who, that's all that matters to me. <laughs> I haven't really to or read too much of the, the novelization, but I also I work in a comic book shop um, sometimes, sometimes. And uh, the, the, the new series of comics and stuff like that, I mean, are just absolutely oh. brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so the, the, the secondary media as far as comic books are concerned, I mean, the artwork, the stories, I mean, everything is just really, really good in that. Um, so I, I, and I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really familiar with any of the comics or any of the books. So, but anything that puts more who out there, it's great. And I have to say, I'm just so glad. So, I'm just glad the BBC realizes the the fan base now in the states. I mean, I, I think it just can help them grow. But of course, they see dollar signs. I don't care. Give me more who merchandise. <laughs> I mean, I want our toy Toys R Us to have Doctor Who figures like they their Toys R Us do over the, over there. I mean, but yeah, I mean little by little. I mean the iPod game, the you know the video games. I mean, I want. I want my tarnish or my science screwdriver or Wii remote that they made for over in England. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean styles. I mean, like over there. I mean, it's everything. I want my Easter candy with who on it, like they do over there. I think it's just a matter of time. So BBC, if you're watching this, we want the merchandise. Okay, I'd like to. Or how about Jamie Dodger? Jamie Dodger. As far as uh, new media and technology advancing the way it is, uh, is there any uh, suggestion of like having a Doctor Who, you know, Twitter feed or a blog or something or a web or or a web based like um, Facebook where something referencing oh in this week such and such and so and so might happen so don't no, forget turn 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 on to oh. and something to where. Uh, they use some of this new technology. They, they do. Okay. Oh, well, they, they have lots of it. I mean, Twitter. I don't know if they have a Twitter feed, but I know they have the Facebook. Okay. Um, I know there there are tons of sites. Because um, now BBC is actually letting some of the content directly from the website make it to the states where before they weren't. Okay. Um, you actually had to have an IP from Europe in order to see the stuff. They're now little by little letting some of that stuff um, be viewable in the states, and also now also posting it on the BBC America sites. As well, but yeah, I mean, I'm attached to the Facebook but page. I'm thinking of they tied into like little orbs that like give you a, a, a hint of or something that would say. Yeah, no, that's their okay. Facebook page does that. Okay. Yeah, because I'm always constantly looking for the little Doctor Who picture at, on my feed to see what new little thing they're going to tell me that I already know about because I'm bad like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, there are tons of websites or tons of message boards. And actually, Moffat actually, there are certain message boards that Moffat actually okay. trolls <laughs> and stuff like that. Other questions for our panel? Yes. Um, I know you all like Matt Smith a lot. So, what do you think of the people? who absolutely hate him and hate Doctor Who every time it changes and hate the new theme and 
there's always going to be somebody. Yeah, I mean, there's always somebody. I mean, I mean, I've been dealing with that sort of thing when when I worked at a comic shop. I mean, you're always having a different creative team come on. You know, stuff changes because right now I'm, I want to throttle DC Comics with what they're getting ready to do, um, oh, yeah. destroying a long, like, a long, long legacy of publishing uh, with renumbering everything to number one. It just mm -hmm. drives me crazy. I mean, yeah, you Marvel stuff. Yeah, but I mean, when you're when you get ready to destroy issue one thousand with the number one, it just drives me crazy. But I mean, you you're always gonna find something like that. I mean, even with Classic Who, I mean, people are not always gonna like the change. They're not always gonna like the Doctor. They're not always gonna like the new companions. They're not always gonna like the new interior of the TARDIS or the TARDIS control panel. I mean, you're always there's always gonna be somebody. And if they wait long enough, it will change again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. now, watch old episodes once Matt Smith regenerates and come back and bring it back again. Um, <laughs> yeah. Other questions? Well, uh, when I heard that Doctor Who was coming back on, you know, the, after the Doctor Who movie, the American Made movie. Oh, uh, uh, Aaron Roberts is the yeah. master. But anyway, you, you had the old Doctor Who was, we look at it at that time period, it was made for kids. And then so naturally, when it when it was, heard it was coming back, I was basically expecting the same same thing. But it looked like they were now writing it for the adults who were the kids, were kids that yeah. watched it originally, and it is in a more an adult level understanding, deep motivation, long term storylines behind the scenes that keeps a continuity going that really attracts our adult attention and interest more than the early ones that we watch now and now they're just kind of cute well i mean i would say that some depending on what season you're looking at they did have an overall story arc some of the seasons i mean douglas adams and the key to time season i mean it was there i, I don't think it was as prevalent with classic who and also depend on what writers you had. Yeah, they're and, more standalone. So yeah. Um, except for the keys of time and some of those that yeah. had a real definite story. Yeah, I mean, like, like some of the Peter Davison stuff definitely had more storylines. I think from Baker, like and Davison, and Baker again a little bit. You know, they did have some of those overall story arcs, but not like they do now. All right. Um, and that's where you got away from me. <laughs> Because now yeah. you can Strong see long <laughs> yeah. background storylines behind the scenes that keeps cropping yeah. up. And, and also talking about the, the level of you know viewership, I mean, we have Sarah Jane Adventures, or we did have Sarah Jane Adventures, that was for the kids. We had Doctor Who for the middle ground, and then we had Torchwood, definitely for the adults. Right. And I'm actually, I'm actually really kind of nervous, scared, excited that Stars is going to be airing Torchwood because... Oh, the full-on man love scene that you're going to be on? I mean, honestly, if you watch anything that Stars, Stars does, from Camelot to uh, Spartacus Splints, and there is no telling what they're going to do with Torchwood, which actually oh, makes it... Mean, deleted scenes sentence. that weren't aired? No, I'm talking about full frontal... No, yeah, yeah, Miracle Day. Oh. Yeah, it's a new season. Oh. Uh, July 8th. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Captain Jack, it's going to get dirty. Just on a side note about the levels, one thing that I really actually do appreciate about the new series is that they have worked very, very hard to make it aimed at sort of everybody. It's like it's it's aimed yeah. at the higher audience, but it is still suitable for the kids. My nine year old godson absolutely adores every minute of it. I mean look at all the little kids that dress up there's a little the the, the He was the doctor yesterday. Little, yeah. Little yeah. With the red yeah and he had and, and he had his he had his like three D glasses. And, yeah, was, <laughs> and then I was at Dragon Con there was this little kid dressed up as Matt Smith. Well but the time the one, so there was a little girl dressed up as Annie Pond yes. in a police outfit. I know that's <laughs> <laughs> you remember, remember the panel much. last year when the two Amy Ponds walked in? Oh my like, god! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I didn't even notice, and, and the same thing is, is, I didn't even notice that the other dude was dressed as Roy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a dude? Yeah, there's a dude. <laughs> and then came, I came in and then, then, then it was over, it's like, hi K9. <laughs> 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 it's like the like Amy Ponds. Curves are getting shorter, or is it just me? Yeah, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Yeah. And they hired Amy? I want that action figure. Yarr. They made fun of the skirt thing in the little, the little mini weather. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes, they did, yeah. Yes. And I want a Charlie Badger now. Okay, okay. Yeah. Should you see the confidential? <laughs> Yeah, people don't, yeah, I actually have some friends that go over to England and I and they're getting ready to go back. I'm like, find me a Charlie Badger. I don't care the price, I will pay it. <laughs> so watch the confidentials. Teaser. <laughs> For Charlie Badger. <laughs> one uh, one other question about the the old canon. Um, when I talk to, to people who just basically came to Who through uh, through number nine, uh, Americans. Here. Um, they talk about the, uh, the difficulty of, of finding, if they actually were to invest the time, um, the difficulty of, of knowing exactly where to go to find absolutely everything. And I wonder if, if uh, the, the increased availability of the old episodes... You can't find everything. Yeah. It's destroyed. There's something, yeah. There's a lot. They're gone. I mean, they're like they have some of the audio. Uh, I know they found... Oh, the BBC of, uh, online. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, it, it comes through in yeah. groups, you know. Well, if you don't get it in this in this group, yeah. you have to wait a long yeah. time for it. But I mean, background. some of them just doesn't exist. But it's great that they have the YouTube player for the states where they show nothing but classic Q. iTunes has some of the the episodes that aren't aren't released right now or have been released and are no longer available. Because I mean, when when Elizabeth Slayton died that day, I want to I tried to find a copy of Time Warrior. I couldn't. I found it up on iTunes and. For six bucks, I got the entire thing. So I mean, I think I mean, yeah, I, it's available, but a lot of it was destroyed because they never realized what they had created. And luckily, Guinness Book of World Records finally realized it and gave it to a two-page spread in the 2011 edition. And I totally forgot it in the car because I was going to bring it and show it and stuff like that. But <laughs> damn it! I mean, it's awesome that Who is finally getting the respect it deserves. Do you think that those? Um, uh, Episodes that, that do exist yeah. that we will see continued. I mean, we're already seeing it oh, now. The yeah. DVD sets coming out and such. Oh, yeah. It'll be more accessible as time goes on. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, just the fact that you know you, you can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them in Best Buy, you can buy them in FYI. I mean, as a release, I mean, they get released a lot faster over in the UK, and be, and I hate that it's a different region. So I'd love to buy the British versions because those box sets look so awesome. Mm -hmm. I love the packaging. But, I mean, yeah, it's just a time, I mean, there's so many stories. We're, we're talking about 48 years worth of stories. You just can't say, here's everything, buy it now. Yeah. Yeah. But I, if, they, yeah. if they could do that, I would, I would do it. I mean, that's one thing I wish, six, 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 yeah, I mean, I would yeah. really wish, it, I would love for them to re release more seasons of the Classic Who as the seasons like Key, key, uh, key to Time. I mean, people bought it. It's just easier to buy a box set than those individuals because they, they're so piecemeal about the story order. Just give me each season and here's my money. Here's, here's my credit card, BBC America. <laughs> <laughs> give it! Do you think the, the, the anniversary will also mean um, more merchandising and... and oh, I hope so! <laughs> I, want, I want a set of, of real replica screwdrivers from all the doctors. Yes! Well, will they do another one of those opera... What do you call it? Opera stage special? For a couple of those at the end. Yeah. Oh, they've done one for uh, almost every season now, and it's always released. Yeah, I think I can imagine a big one for the uh, anniversary. Gosh. Maybe getting all the surviving doctors or something. Okay. Real quick, Netflix has a really big question. Yes. 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 And uh, a fair <coughs> number of them are on instant watch also. Yeah. So yes, they, uh, that's been uh, my big thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, they realize the fan base is huge. I just keep getting, just keep getting so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite classic Who episode? Oh, hands off, Castor Baba, because that's the first time I see Peter Davison. I mean, it's, it's not the best episode of Doctor Who, but that is because because he's my doctor, and it's just that that's mine. Don't even have to think about it. I'm not thinking. <laughs> 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 oh, God, I'm Hand of Fear. Good episode. Uh, Archer, Sarah Jane. Yeah. Kisses of a Dog. Yeah, some of the departures yeah. and meetings are some yeah. of the best episodes. Yeah, I mean, like Time Warrior, I had forgotten just how amazing that first Sarah Jane Smith episode was because she was her own woman. She was very young. And she thought the Doctor was the bad guy. I mean, she knew he was the bad guy. I mean, and uh, that's a great episode. Oh, yeah. I like Genesis of the Daleks because now that you said that, I'm running about in my head. Oh, 
I, I don't, I, I can't pick a favorite. I mean, they're just, they're all too good. Yeah, because if you look at the case of time, you consider that an episode almost. And that's a, a number of episodes, but yeah. then you consider, well, that's my favorite episode as a kid. Key to time, which is actually a number of them. It's an entire season? Yeah. Yes. I, I wouldn't consider the key to the time as my favorite episode because while you do have Rymos Operation, which is awesome, and Androids of Tara, which is awesome, you also have the power of Kroll, which is awesome in an entirely <laughs> different way. <laughs> and, and it's like, eh, key to time was good. I couldn't count the whole thing as my favorite. <laughs> Parting question. Um, uh, Jeff, 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 Jeff. Wow, that was way too fast. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, I asked favorite, favorite uh, classic uh, uh, doctor and favorite contemporary doctor. Let me ask um, both of those things for companion. Oh, oh God. Oh. <laughs> for me right now, it has to be uh, Brigadier and Sarah. Uh, because those were two, I mean, I mean, they just, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. Um, Rory. <laughs> Rory is so the Rory, the Rory love is, is over. And honestly, I don't think they thought Rory was going to be as big of a, as a character as he was. I think it's interesting. It really surprised me. I think it's supposed to be like one or two episodes sort of brief appearance. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. Um, classic companion. I gotta go Sarah Jane. Uh, um, <laughs> Modern command. I gotta go Rory. I almost want to go Martha, but I, I think I gotta go Rory. Yeah. yeah that, that ponytail of the dream. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a doctor, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, you know, I mean, Amy Paul was worried about, you know, their, uh, their babies having time heads. And yeah. <laughs> it's a time head, you know. Um, boy, he's just got a big, dumb, stupid face, but he's just so cute. <laughs> Sarah Jane and Rory. <laughs> no ace love? Hey, I'll tell you, I just met Sophie, and oh my god, is she amazing. <laughs> she is a sweetheart. I met her last weekend. I mean, an absolute, absolute, absolute sweetheart of a person and a great companion. Now, how many people like Donna? She, Dr. Donna. Donna was awesome. Donna would have been my choice for people. Do you ever foresee a possibility in the far, far, far future where? These locked away memories kind of come up, and then the I mean, if we time get that, thing comes forward a little bit. I would say if we, if we get that, it's my 50th anniversary. But I mean, if you look at Moffat, he is sort of, I'm not going to say he distances himself, but I mean, he doesn't draw a lot from the the, the Davies stuff. I just wonder if they ever left that as a possible window. Oh, yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, it's the same thing with the ring that they left on the beach after burning the master. Cremating the master. I mean, they always writers, if they're good, will always leave small little plot holes that are little tidbits. So something in the future can always come back, bring a character back. Gets there. Yeah. Intellectualism. Kind of like Jenny. Um, the Jenny. I'm saying her real name. Um, the doctor's daughter. Oh yeah, no Jenny. Um, originally yeah. that character was supposed to die, but Moffat told Davies, "You can't kill her. I want her." <laughs> So I, I've honestly, I've been waiting. I kept expecting a spinoff. I never saw one. No, but no, um, Moffat, Moffat was one that said you, you can't kill her off permanently. I'm going to use her. There is a purpose. Yeah, there's a purpose. And yeah. Moffat, there's That's always the a purpose. But the question is, how long are we going to have to wait? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, I mean, of course, the thing is, she was just pregnant and all. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless. It's a new time. Unless no, that that can't be. <laughs> oh, that would that would that would totally be. No, that can't be. <laughs> <laughs> so what what if the little girl in the suit was Jenny? It can't be because we've already seen her regenerate. She regenerates differently. That's true. And on that note, thank you so much. <laughs>